Your uh, second option for the last project in the Illustrator unit is to design a Threadless t-shirt. Uh, Threadless.com is an online store that sells um, t-shirts and a bunch of other stuff that uh, is designed by artists and designers who submit designs to them. Um, anybody can vote on the designs and uh, once a design gets enough votes it's made into a t-shirt by that company Threadless and uh, it's a really cool community they make a lot of really interesting looking stuff um, I really like their designs and I thought it would be kinda cool to sort of encourage you guys to submit a design to them that is an actual option once you finish your design you can submit it to the Threadless website if you follow their submission guidelines uh, you don't have to um, I'm basically expecting a uh, an artwork that is kind of the culmination of everything you've learned about um, Illustrator up until this point for this unit. So uh, you just kind of have to make a really well-made design for this last project here. Um, you can use Live Trace uh, in Illustrator and I encourage you to clean it up your uh, drawing in Photoshop before you do that. Just uh, think back to all that you've learned about that process and use that process if you're comfortable with it. Um, uh, the submission guidelines are pretty straightforward. I can kind of walk you through how to make it, you know, 72 dpi and, you know, a certain pixel dimension. Um, we will learn how to do this in the Photoshop unit too, so if you don't want to do this, don't feel like you have to. Um, the site itself is actually organized by the kinds of things you can buy, like t-shirts and, and hoodies and stuff, and then it also, I think, has categories uh, for the designs, so there's you know all sorts of different categories trying to fit all sorts of different lifestyles and preferences. Uh, you don't necessarily have to fit your design into one of these categories, although it's kind of recommended. Um, I think since the last time I made this PowerPoint or checked the website, they've probably toned down the categories or reorganized their websites. So uh, when you visit there, it may look a little bit different than these screenshots. But check it out and sort of look at their designs. They have lots of really cool designs on there. Here's a professional example of a design that was submitted and got made into a shirt. Uh, this artist, I believe, used Photoshop, but again, you know, still cool design. Uh, this design here was probably made using Illustrator. And you notice it's a lot simpler than the previous example. I don't necessarily care what style or what subject matter you pick for your shirt is um, so long as it's school appropriate and it's a well-made uh, detailed design uh, it's fair game by me. Take a look at these other examples and visit the website and then you can uh, get working on your um, drawing and uh, whip it up in Illustrator. I'm just gonna do a quick uh, walkthrough of kind of my recommended tracing method for Illustrator and this is kind of a universal method. You could use it with any drawing that you make of any kind. Um, this is just going to give you a couple extra tips and tricks as I kind of remind you of the basic steps of how I highly recommend you clean up your scans and import them into and then later live trace them in uh, Illustrator for your vector illustrations. So first things first, I've got the scan here and uh, this scan was for a t-shirt, uh, the back of the, back of the faculty homecoming t-shirts, uh, it's a drawing I outlined a marker before I scanned. And you can see I tried to be as precise as I could be with the marker. Uh, this saves an awful lot of cleanup time and it saves an awful lot of hassles with the, uh, the files uh, in Illustrator as well. So once I've got this scanned, I'm going to take it into Photoshop here and uh, you can do the basics. You can uh, use your crop tool which is over here in the toolbox and uh, crop out all the unnecessary information. Double click to commit your crop. And once you've got that you can uh, double click it to make it a layer and then just copy that layer so that you have a protected uh, original. Okay and then you're gonna hide that and you can even you know while it's visible you could you can lock it if you want and hide it. Um, and on the original layer your first thing you're probably going to want to do is a couple adjustment layers above that. So to add an adjustment layer from the layer panel, just click on the adjustment button in the middle. It's a circle that's half black, half white. Uh, if your image is in color or has color, I highly recommend you just work in black and white so you can make a black and white. Um, 
adjustment there and then you can also add a from the adjustment panel which is again the same symbol half black and white circle uh, you can add a, a curves or a levels layer um, curves does kind of the same thing as levels except it's a little bit more advanced uh, you can move the black slider to determine what is true black so you notice as I move the black slider inward toward my histogram spike in black over here uh, the image becomes way darker and if I move my white you know true white becomes kind of any light gray that it sees uh, and I can I can do that just to get rid of the super light gray in there and then you can also zoom in and uh, you know adjust any other gray values to what you want them to be another handy thing about the curves palette is if you click the uh, click and drag in image to modify curve button uh, you can literally uh, click and drag on the image to turn up or turn down a value so if I want to turn my black down I can click and drag on that to turn it down if I want to turn up my white I can click and drag to turn that up uh, my gray in here I can turn that down and you'll notice that that will affect the curve here and all my grays become kind of this blackish color I can turn up my grays here get rid of them um, once you're done with that you can always come back to your adjustment layer by double clicking on it next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna paint to kinda clean up the rest of your uh, mistakes or any other changes you want to make to your image so go back to your original layer and then click the new layer button and then switch to your brush tool real quick brush tool uh, hotkeys for that right bracket key will make your brush larger okay so you can paint away uh, large mistakes uh, left bracket key will make it smaller alright your default black and white is kind of what you want to use if you're painting a black and white image and just clean up everything that you don't want in your image um, X will switch between black and white so if you want to paint something new into your um, design you can do that right now I don't really want to so I'm not going to paint with black and white but you could if you wanted to notice my legs and my hands are separate I can stitch those together in Photoshop with my paint or I can just wait until Illustrator and attach them. As soon as you're done with that save your uh, file as a Photoshop file okay save okay and then you can also save it as a JPEG if you really want to save as JPEG I often save it as a JPEG just in case okay and then you're gonna switch over to Illustrator in Illustrator you just need to make a new file and place your uh, image that you just cleaned up inside that file so go to file place uh, locate your image okay and place the file now when it comes into Illustrator you're gonna use Live Trace now Live Trace is a little bit different in CS6 there's an actual panel for it um, but some of the same options are available here so just click the drop down menu and then click on tracing options if you're in CS5 and then you know obviously if you're in CS6 the panel will have all these same options except they'll probably be hidden behind their, these headings trace settings adjustments so just click those the drop down arrows for those areas to uh, get more advanced options uh, you want the most advanced version or appearance to your panel so that you can adjust all of this I recommend you check the ignore white box and then I recommend you check the preview box or the trace box whatever shows you how your trace appears Okay. Um, once you're happy with the settings in these advanced settings you can click trace or ok and uh, then you're going to want to hit expand Okay, and this is going to make your trace a live uh, shape, an actual object. When you have expanded your shape, any uh, free floating objects here will be a part of um, a large group. And so, the first thing I would recommend, especially if you have a bunch of parts that are kind of floating around, have been traced, that you uh, ungroup your group. To do that, just select the whole group go to object on group or shift control G okay 
a lot of your objects uh, will be kind of okay by themselves, but some of them may need to be regrouped into you know what they were before. So right here you'll notice uh, parts of this desk uh, illustration here are kind of not part of that group anymore. So I am just going to highlight all of these objects and regroup them as a logical group. So Control G to group, and now all my dust parts are part of my desk here. I can do the same thing for the pretzel. If I want, I can move up the legs. Okay, I can move the hand over here, rotate that a little bit, and then hit Control G to regroup him. But I'm actually going to do more with him. Okay, so some things you can do with your illustration once you've got it live traced and then expanded. Uh, for mine, my feet were separate, my whole body here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use my Pathfinder panel here to uh, combine these together. So, you know, I can use my direct select tool and make sure that overlaps there. And then I'm going to use uh, the Unite option to create all one shape here. So you'll notice the leg shapes are separate the body. So just hold down the shift key and click on all of the parts that you wish to combine. Now shift. And then go to your Pathfinder panel, which if it's not open, go to Window Pathfinder to open it. Okay. And in your Pathfinder panel, you can try a bunch of different options. If one of the options doesn't work, uh, just Control Z. So let's try Unite. That seemed to work. If that didn't work, we would just hit Control Z. Okay, and then we would try uh, trim or merge, which kind of do the same things. All right, so now our uh, design is all one object. All right, and I can do that for parts that have gaps. Like if I want to make this part of this part, I just overlap them and then hit Unite. I might also want to do some other kinds of cleanup. So um, you'll notice that sometimes paths, no matter what you do, will come out of the live trace looking really, really messy. So these actually look really, really messy. Um, I could have done an awful lot to fix them, but let's say you just have kind of a messy line. Let's go through kind of the basic tools you can use to uh, uh, clean that up. So with the pen tool, it, when you select an object, uh, its anchor points will be visible, and then you can hover the pen tool over anchor points that you don't want, and it should change to a uh, delete anchor uh, pen tool. And you can just click on those to delete any unnecessary points. Okay. And that can be kind of time consuming. So, you know, all you're doing is deleting anchor points. Uh, click and hold on the pen to tool to uh, just use the delete anchor point tool so that you're only deleting points. Okay? And you really don't need a whole lot of them. Uh, I probably only need one or two to define this curve here. Okay? Another tool you can use is the uh, convert anchor point tool. Okay? So this tool. Uh, restretches handles. So if I need this to be a curved point right here, I can restretch those handles. Okay. You'll notice now it's a nice neat curve with two handles. It also breaks handles. So if I go back to my uh, convert anchor point tool and, and click on a handle with it, it will break that handle out. So again, you can use that to reshape your form. And then the last tool you can use to reshape things is uh, your direct select tool. So this will move uh, anchor points and it'll move handles and you can use this to clean stuff up. Another tool you can use is the smooth tool. So another tool um, I sometimes use but don't recommend you use uh, to clean up rough edges is the smooth tool. Um, if you click and hold on the pencil tool and release on the smooth tool, the smooth tool just sort of uh, redraws lines for you or smooths them out. So I can kind of click and drag on this selected object here and it'll kind of smooth out some anchor points for me. It doesn't really work too well, but sometimes it really does help. Notice if I make multiple passes, it will start to really smooth things out. And it doesn't necessarily guarantee you'll have less anchor points, so you might not want to use it all the time.
Another option available to you for simplifying paths is the simplify command. Um, this is also kind of a last ditch option that I only do if I know I don't really care about the integrity of my uh, object or drawing. This one's pretty simple so I probably wouldn't have used this option at all. Maybe a little bit, but if I have a big giant object with a ton of points that I just don't want to spend the time cleaning up and I don't care if it kind of changes drastically, I'll use this command. So just to show you what it does, I have one object selected here. You need to select a path for it to work. And then go to Object, Path, and then Simplify. And there's your Path Simplify command. Okay? This dialog box will pop up. You're going to want to check the preview box. And you'll notice uh, the default curve precision setting is 50%, which really, really warps your image. So uh, you're going to want to probably change that to a little higher than 50%. And even at 75%, we still look kind of messy in here. Like I've lost my eyebrow definition. Um, if I could scroll down, I would show you how messed up the bottom is. But you'll notice we went from 353 points to 73 points, which is really handy. Um, let's go to around 90%. Okay, that's not too bad. All right, we look okay. Um, and there's other options down here, like only use straight lines and then show original. You can play with those if you want. But when you're happy with it, click okay. Uh, essentially what we've done is we've done a lot of the work uh, that we needed to do for ourselves here. So everything that simplify command simplified has less points. Um, those points are sort of like the computer guesses whether or not they're curved or corner. So sometimes you may find corner points where you don't want them and curved unbroken handles uh, where you really don't want them. Like up here in this corner here we have got a really weird looking corner. The computer wouldn't know though that that's a corner. Okay, so that's kind of why you don't want to use the simplify command unless it's kind of a last ditch effort. Let's say you're all done uh, cleaning up your object. Um, an easy way to paint your object that I've recommended in the past and I will kind of review for you now is live paint. Uh, live paint uh, takes objects that you've made and it automatically adds color fills for you. So let's say I'm ready for live paint right now. So I'll select this object and then if you click and hold on the shape builder tool and release on the live paint bucket tool you'll be able to uh, click on uh, the selected object to make it a live paint group. Um, I'm going to start out by painting my uh, pretzel orange so I'm going to go to the swatches panel and click on orange to make that my first color I use. You can always use the arrow keys to change your color if you need to. And then I'm going to paint the pretzel orange. Okay. So if I click in these closed gap sections here, uh, that will change to orange. If the computer does not automatically detect a gap between two lines like it did here, it will uh, make that all one shape. So this right here is too wide of a gap. Um, if I want to close that gap to make that two separate shapes, I just go to my direct select tool and pull this anchor down so that it uh, closes the gap here. Okay, and you'll notice there'll be a red line to show the gap. Okay, so now I can go back to my live paint bucket tool and change that to none. And there we go. I can keep painting as much as I want. Um, that's all you really need to know for your threadless t-shirt design, uh, your uh, redesign the bathroom sign uh, project. Uh, there's a ton of other projects where you probably want to use this. And this is just kind of a quick review of this process. If you want to see the full process or if you want to read a tutorial, go back to the initial live trace um, projects and that will kind of walk you through how to do this in more detail. Read the tutorials. Uh, look up live trace online uh, it's it's a very handy tool and it has a lot of like other things it can do depending on what you want it to do